the National Science Foundation, where discoveries begin. Beneath the earth we know lie other worlds, hidden from sight, lost in time. But sometimes we can glimpse a lost world through remnants of the past. We definitely got a skull. Oh, right, what do you think? Mm, it's hard to say. Maybe this story begins with the discovery of unidentified bones. A team of paleontologists will try to figure out whose bones they are and what world they came from. So we got a time frame. That's a start. They were discovered in Kansas, mostly farmland today. But once, Kansas lay beneath a vast sea. It was 82 million years ago, during the age of the dinosaurs. There was another world of giants on Earth. A submerged world where enormous reptiles ruled seas filled with incredible creatures. dangerous seas of all time. No living thing was safe. Great marine reptiles disappeared long ago, and time has buried their world. But any of us might still encounter a sea monster. As if from nowhere, the distant past returns. The scientists hope to find not just the fossil of an ancient creature, but a story recorded in its bones. Grab your tools. Washed some of the chalk away and exposed it. This is great. Okay. They recognize it as something special. A rare Dolly Karinkops, a 
of Dali for short. It was a marine reptile of the late Cretaceous. A little bigger than a dolphin and a fast swimmer. To unravel any story the bones may tell, the investigators will draw on everything they know about marine reptiles. Yeah, it looks like a Hesperornis. Their fossils have been found around the world over Could decades. Have been over These finds will help the team piece together the story of the Dali and picture the moment in time when it swam in the sea. In many ways, the Dali's world was far different from ours. The climate was warmer, sea levels were higher, and more of Earth was submerged. This dolly would have lived in a vast inland sea that cut North America in two. Marine reptiles were also found in the waters around Europe, which was a scattering of islands and throughout the world's oceans. In time, they died out and sea levels retreated, exposing vast areas of seabed. Fossils from the ancient oceans turned up on every continent. The discovery in the Australian outback offers clues to how the Dali's life may have begun. It seems to be laying out in a pretty consistent pattern. 95% of the fossils we're finding here are the bones of juveniles. So many small bones in one area suggest that marine reptiles gathered in protected shallows to give birth. And in North America, that's how the story of this Dali begins to unfold. Imagine that one of the creatures in the shallows is a pregnant Dali Karinkops. She gives birth to a male, 18 inches long and colored like his mother. And a female, darker in color, with light patches below her eyes. And it's her life we begin to follow. She and her brother are air breathers. Instinct tells them what they have to do in their first minute alive. From the beginning, the little female and her brother practice skills they'll need one day, when they'll have to leave the safety of the shallows for the dangerous seas beyond. If she survives the perils to come, she'll return here one day and have young of her own. Already, she finds competition for food. There's the Hesperornis, a bird that can't fly and has a beak full of sharp teeth. And the Styxosaurus, a distant cousin of the Dollies with a supersized neck. An adult can reach 35 feet in length. More than half of it, neck. Its shape makes it a slower swimmer, but it's great for catching fish. soon comes across creatures that move by pumping jets of water from their shells. They're called ammonites, 
and they thrive in the ancient sea. They have rock-hard armor, and perhaps another defense. Swim too close like the little female, and get a face full of ink. But that doesn't stop a young platycarpus when it wants a snack. Ammonites were once abundant, and their fossils have been uncovered often even by a road crew in Texas. Ammonites, a lot of them. There were many kinds of ammonites we know when most of them lived. So their fossils are like markers in time. Identify an ammonite, and you can date other less common fossils nearby. That helps place dollies in the long history of marine reptiles. It began some 250 million years ago in the Triassic period, with land reptiles that moved into the sea. They developed webbed feet, then flippers, Some had elaborate armor. Into the Jurassic, they continued to evolve. To see at great depths, some had eyes the size of dinner plates. Top predators grew immense and powerful, reaching their peak in the late Cretaceous, near the end of the dinosaur age. The very time for the Dali Karin cops that lived. Months have passed, and the female and her brother are now juveniles. But they're still in the safety of the shallows, and unaware of the huge predators in the sea beyond. For now, they're mastering the art of catching their favorite prey. Herring-like fish called Encodus. Then one day, everything changes for the Dollies. Perhaps it's a change of seasons that causes the Encodus to head out to sea on a migration. The Dollies must follow their main source of food. And that means the young female and her brother must now set out on the journey of their lives. Trailing their mother from the shallows out into the western interior sea. It's about the size of the Mediterranean, and only a few hundred feet deep. But somewhere ahead are enormous predators. We know because where those predators once swam, the layered earth holds their remains as if a vast graveyard. Exposed to wind and rain, it gradually reveals what's within. A remarkable discovery was made by Charles Sternberg and his sons, pioneering fossil collectors in the American Midwest. Uh, I covered him so nobody else would notice and disturb him. Uh, yeah. Skull looks like some kind of tylosaur. Big one. Levi, you look over there, about where the It was a creature might. like this the dollies might encounter in deeper waters. Like 
waters filled with dangers. The Tusatuthis was a massive hunter, like the giant squid of today. Up to 30 feet long and abundant in the inland sea. too big to be attacked by the platycarpus, who settles for smaller prey. The platycarpus itself was fierce, but not in the same league as its larger relative, the creature the Sternbergs had found. Few ocean predators ever would compare with the beast they were uncovering. I think I've got some tail vertebrae over here. Could be lower limb bones, part of a paddle. Skull here, paddle there. Tail vertebrae over there. This fella could be giant sized. It was a giant with no enemy. great reptile called Tylosaurus. One of the largest and most ferocious creatures of any age. A fossil of a closely related beast tells us more. Its eyes were as big as grapefruits. Cone-shaped teeth filled its jaws, and the roof of its mouth, perfect for seizing prey. The Tylosaurs were out there. But there were other predators more easily spotted. As fish go, Xyphactinus was gigantic, up to 17 feet long. the size of a little female donkey. It was a hundred that could kill quickly. And this day, one did. We know what happened from a fossil excavated in the Badlands of Kansas by Charles Sternberg's son, George. Mr. Sternberg, I uh, called from the newspaper. A lot of talk about what you found out here. Glad you could come. Well, thank you. Caught a pretty big fish here. What is it exactly? This is a 13-foot Xyphactinus, but there's more to it. As I went through digging out the fossil, I noticed something beneath the ribs. I found some vertebrae, kept on going. Turned out to be an entire animal inside. was a six-foot fish called a gillicus. Such a mouthful that swallowing it killed the Xyphactinus, a prehistoric victim of gluttony. Weeks pass, 
and the Dollies are now far from any shore, venturing into a sea turned magical by night. Microscopic plankton give off an eerie glow. Under cover of darkness, the encodus rest, not quite sleeping. The dollies keep their eyes trained for predators. And one is about to change their lives. There's hundreds of shark's teeth here. After a long day hunting fossils, two amateur collectors unearth the wealth of shark's teeth. So many have been found around the world that it's clear sharks were thriving during the age of the sea monsters. The Cretaxi rhina is as big and lethal as the great white of our day. It slices its victims into bite-sized chunks using razor-sharp teeth. There is evidence from a Dutch quarry that ancient sharks fed on even the largest marine reptiles, leaving tooth marks on their bones. It's their mother who becomes the target. Their mother is gone, but it isn't over. A smaller shark goes after the young female. She's wounded, but she survives the initial charge. lucky. Her injury will heal, though she'll always carry a shark's tooth embedded in her flipper. The two youngsters must now continue on their own. survive, they'll have to find food and their way in this vast inland sea. Finally, they see something familiar, a school of encodus 
trailed by other dollies. Flightless Hesperornis. But nearly anything in the sea can be a meal for a Tylosaur. This one died with a full stomach. Yeah, it looks like a uh, Hesperornis. Big as a pelican. Maybe bigger. The stomach contents of a single tylosaur reveal its enormous yeah, appetite. So. This looks like the bone of a three to five foot long teleus fish. Got a bone here from a small mosasaur, probably the size of an alligator. And it seems like he swallowed a shark. Big eater, this guy. For several weeks, the travelers push on. The female's flipper is slowly healing, the embedded tooth now surrounded by scar tissue. meal of squid. One escapes among a colony of crinoids, prehistoric relatives of sea stars, perhaps swept up from the bottom by currents. directly in the sights of a giant. Taking the exposed parts of the skeleton together, skull to tail, I make the specimen about a 29-footer. Yeah. There's something in the stomach. found the monster's last meal entombed within its ribs. Because dollies are fast, a Tylosaur's best bet is to catch one by surprise. see the danger coming. The Sternbergs had discovered a story locked in time of two ancient lives intersecting. But why did the predator die so soon after eating the dolly? Talosaurs were likely territorial and aggressive, even with each other. Perhaps an older Talosaur suddenly appeared the younger Tylosaur is threatened and tiring, slowed down by the large meal in his stomach. 
the female dolly is forgotten. is mortally wounded. But his story isn't over. His final fate was recorded in stone. A shark's tooth lay near the fossil. Look at this! female moves on with the others. Soon, the scavenging will begin. of her mother and brother, but she survived. Each year, marine reptiles gather again in the birthing grounds of the shallows. Among them is the dolly with the wounded flipper, now fully grown. She's completed her journey and returned to the waters of her birth. And after several seasons, she becomes a mother. Her young will grow larger and stronger, and one day set out on their own journey through the inland sea. Day by day, month by month, life plays out. She sees several litters of her offspring mature and depart on lives of their own. Eventually, a year comes when the mother can't finish the migration. One quiet day, and old age has weakened her body. Her life comes to a gentle end. Millions of years worth of days and nights and seasons pass as she lies undisturbed. Sea levels rise and fall. Around the world, continents shift. Volcanic activity changes the face of the Earth. New species appear, and old species vanish, including the last of the sea monsters. Beneath the shifting land, the remains of the great ocean reptiles are turned by time into rock. Daddy? And lie hidden until exposed. Daddy? this time by a summer rain. How are we going to take it out? We may have to plaster the whole thing and take it out in a jacket. Hey, come check this out. There was something unusual about one of the rear flippers. A 
a shark's tooth embedded between the bones. other creatures still buried within the layers of the earth, waiting for us to find them, waiting to tell us stories of our world when it was theirs. Oh, my God. 